What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this weekend's update. Today's Friday, December 20th. Hope everybody had a great week dealing with the uphill grind in the markets. Uh, before we jump into the alerts, let's talk about who got caught being hot this week. Uh, this week goes to one of our members, Tim Newton. Congrats, Tim. You got caught being hot. He he shared an experience that I think is really helpful for a lot of traders, and that was as it relates to him getting assigned on some SPY short calls due to a dividend. And I, I think this is just a, a great lesson because what Tim did was, as he self-admittedly said, he kind of he kind of freaked out a little bit, got a little bit nervous, had a little bit of confusion about what happens when you get assigned because as you can imagine, if you've ever been assigned and all of a sudden you you know you get assigned and, and your buying power reduction expands, your margin requirement expands because now you own that short stock. And the reality is all you have to do is close the position and it's not that big of a deal. But when you open your brokerage account and you see this issue, I know it can, when you're a newer trader and you're trying to figure everything out, it can be very, very scary, right? So, but what Tim did is he reviewed the option assignment mini course that we have. He called his broker, just mechanically closed the trade, walked through the process of, of taking care of the situation. And he's learned a lot from this situation and he's going to be a much better trader because of it, because he now knows and understands what that's all about. And I, I the reason I want to make such a big deal about this is because I had a situation today with a member on the exact opposite. They emailed me and they had the same situation happen. They got assigned a spy. Uh, they had a short call that got assigned in spy and they were freaking out. They canceled their membership. They, uh, you know, they said, you know, this is just, they kind of wanted to blame us, you know, because I said, yeah, you know, you can trade SPY instead of SPX. Of course, you can't get assigned shares in SPX. But this person took the attitude of, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. I got assigned uh, stock. Uh, this just isn't for me. I'm out here kind of thing. And, and, they're, and they're never going to be able to see the success as a trader. And so I bring this up because, I mean, it, it kills me when that happens because I, and I tried to explain this in the email that, hey, there are a lot of nuances. I mean, we have the option assignment mini course. We talk about it in the Iron Duck strategy of the difference between trading SPY and SPX. So we try to provide as much detail as information as possible. But when it actually happens in real life, in real trading, and, and they don't want to take the time to understand it, and they bail on trading just because they got assigned on a, on a short call, I mean... Man, I feel I feel really bad, but I think it's it's really important to understand the mindset between this person and what Tim Newton, Tim Newton did, and the fact that they posted it in the community to help other traders. That is what this is all about, my friends. So, congrats, Tim. Appreciate your contribution. Appreciate you sharing your experience and helping other traders. Uh, good stuff, man. And it's just going to make you that that type of mindset is what's going to set you apart and make you a successful trader, as opposed to somebody who runs into a little issue and decides to bail on trading altogether. So congrats. Kudos to you, man. Good stuff. All right, let's jump into the alerts, starting with the Monday alerts on the on the 16th. First one was a closing adjusting trade in ZB. So we closed out one set of our short strangles in ZB, booked over 30% of max profit, only had the trade on for four days. So got a quick contraction and implied volatility gave us a chance to book that. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we rolled one set of our short call verticals. Uh, it was down to four days to expiration. So we rolled out to Jan with 32 days, adjusted our strikes to keep that, uh, keep that dream alive, keep uh, rolling that for that uh, extending duration, keeping short delta in our portfolio and, um, and, and continuing to move on. I'll go to DIA on the platform. We had another roll here. Uh, closing trade in Amazon. So we closed out our Iron Duck in Amazon, booked a beak profit on the trade. Price ran higher, very little chance of getting back to max profit. So we just went ahead and closed that out to redeploy that capital. 
Next one, rolling adjusting trade in IWM. So we're, you know, when we're in expiration week, we had a handful of trades still in the December cycle. So uh, had quite a few rolls this week. IWM, another one, uh, it was a long put vertical, rolled it from Dees out to Feb, went ahead and just skipped January, added a little bit more duration, adjusted those strikes to keep that short delta exposure. Uh, speaking of short delta, we're right at a little over three to one on our uh, short delta versus our theta. So not in bad shape. Of course, that short delta is hurting on a week like this when the market just, market just rips higher, um, but it is uh, critical to have in place. Next trade, closing trade in forward slash 6B. So we booked over 60% of max profit on this. I would talked about this earlier in the week on, on our daily update videos and how um, you know, the, the Brexit vote was going to happen. Implied volatility was going to get crushed. Uh, that's exactly what happened. Now, price was hanging out in the upper end of our range, and we got down to 17 days to expiration. So we really want to try to either roll or close these once we get under around 21 days to expiration. Gave it a couple extra days, and the price dropped this morning uh, of the 17th. And so we came right almost into the center of our, of our short strangle, booked a great profit on that trade. And so we're totally out of 6B as the implied volatility has contracted significantly. In fact, let's go to FXB, which is the corresponding ETF, to give you an idea. So yeah, I mean, here's the crush that happened right after that vote was over. It did pop up a little bit. I was hoping it was going to keep climbing and we were going to be able to, to kind of re-enter, but it turned around with the rest of everything and implied volatility just started contracting again. So we're out of the British pound at this point uh, until implied volatility gets a little bit more attractive. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in the QQQ. So another one of these, we rolled from Dees to Jan and adjusted our strikes accordingly. And I'll, I'm going to go to the platform to review all these. I just want to get through some of these rolls and we'll, then we'll go back and talk about them. Uh, next one, rolling adjusting trade in SPY, rolled from Dees out to Feb. Again, some of these we rolled to Jan, some we rolled to Feb. All we're doing is we're spreading out, we're kind of diversifying our days to expiration. And so if you're wondering, you know, why did you do some to Feb? Why did you do some to Jan? It's really just a matter of kind of diversifying those, spreading those out uh, between different expiration cycles. Uh, next one here on the 17th, opened a new iron duck in Google. And I uh, did get a question in the community, like, you know, what's the difference between Goog L and Goog? And, and really, it's just two different share classes of stock. Um, the owners of Google, uh, Larry and whatever the other guy's name is, I can't, <laughs> can't remember off the top of my head, which, by the way, they, uh, they actually exited as the, as the CEO. So they're, they're on the board now, but they're not even, they're not even the CEO. But um, regardless, uh, back to the back to the difference. Um, they just created two different share classes of the stock. And so both of them are almost identical. Uh, the liquidity we typically find is slightly better in Google. Uh, so we usually try to trade that, but you know, like in my personal account, for example, I've got an iron duck in Google and I've got some directional verticals in Goog, you know, so I just, I, I, I use both of them and the liquidity is not going to be an issue in either one, but I just tend to gravitate to Google first. And then uh, if I want additional trades, just kind of keep the tracking separate. Sometimes I'll do that in the in the other one. So either one is completely fine to trade, uh, but that that's kind of the story there. Uh, let's let's take a look at Google. So if we go to the Analyze tab, so here's what that looks like. Uh, not much movement since we put that on. You can see it's run up in the beak a little bit. Uh, so just holding on to that um, into the expiration, which in this case is the January 3rd expiration cycle. 17 days to expiration from the time that we put it on. Next, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we rolled our remaining short call vertical and we did this one to Feb. So we did one to Jan, one to Feb, and just keeping that short delta exposure. And then here's one in QQQ that we did from Dees to Feb as well. And then uh, did an opening trade in FDX. So we had on, uh, excuse me, FedEx announced earnings. After they announced, the stock dropped significantly, about 10%. And so implied volatility stayed elevated. And so we went ahead and added a nine-day duck after the earnings announcement. And so let's take a look at where we're at on that one. 
we take a look here, let me check the correct boxes and you can see that's where we're at. So price is up here. Uh, one question that I, that has come up a couple times is, I mean, look at the P and L line. It's above the expiration expiration line. So should we take this off and, and book that money for us? The answer is no. I mean, you can do what you want, but for us, we're, we're really in this game to, you know, potentially get a max profit. And so with a week left on this, if we put our price slice to the edge of the beak, and make sure we change our calendar to the expiration date. You can see we still got a 35% chance of getting into that duckhead area. So we are going to leave it. So that's uh, that's the way we manage those. Opening adjusting trade in ZB. So uh, we closed one out earlier this week and implied volatility was still decent. IV percentile just over that 50 mark at 52. And so we had, went ahead and sold another strangle. Did this out in um, in the March cycle with 65 days to expiration. Again, just kind of spreading that out. We typically don't sell premium over 60 days because the theta decay is slower that further that far out. Uh, but our other piece is in the Feb cycle, and so we went ahead and just diversified that by adding this one in March. So if we take a look at ZB, here's the two pieces. Here's the 161 straddle that we've got on. Widen this out so you can see it a little bit better. Price is hanging out right here at the lower end of this range. So if we look at just the untested side, just the call side, you can see we've got a little bit of premium left in there. So we haven't made another adjustment yet. But if price continues lower next week, we will roll down these calls to about the 30 delta and continue to manage that. And that cycle has, what's it got, 30, uh, 35 days to expiration still. And so we've got that one um, in, in that cycle. And then the one we just added is out here in 60 with th 63 days as of today. And so that hasn't moved much. Pretty, pretty well centered right there. Next alert was uh, opening trade in rut. Did it added another double uh, calendar, a weekly double calendar. Front week, eight days to expiration. Back week, 15 days to expiration. We went ahead and skewed this one a bit to give us more room to the downside. Just, I mean, no other, I got some questions on this, really no other reason except that, I mean, this market's just been on a tremendous run. And remember with calendar spreads, when implied volatility expands, that expands our break even, it expands our max profit. And so, and just to add a little bit of short delta, we just went ahead and skewed this to give it a little bit more room to the downside. Uh, now what happened today? Well, stocks continued higher, of course, because that's what they do now. They're not allowed to go down. Uh, but here's here's where we're at. So price is where's the price of rut? 1671. Oh, so it's hiding behind this this red hash mark. So it's right there, and you can see, um, you know, with the price moving up. Now we're already at the kind of the break even area. Now that doesn't matter. We don't do anything at that break even. You know, we're gonna wait till we're down uh, about 350 bucks on this trade. So it'd be way out here potentially before we would do anything. But um, you know, hopefully we get just a little bit of reversal. That's all we need is a little tiny downturn in, in stocks, a little tiny downturn in rut, and we'll be back in here. And what will happen is our the implied volatility will really create an expansion in this or our max profit could jump up to 500 or 600 whereas right now you know in the in the middle of this it's about 337 so that's what I'm that's what we're hoping for uh, just again instead of taking a pure directional play we just skewed this a little bit so when we put it on price was hanging out about right here and so just giving us a little bit more room to the downside and now of course we've got quite a bit room quite a bit more room to the downside so we'll see what happens in rut all right, next, moving on, closing trade. So we had another uh, weekly double calendar in rut and uh, you know this one this one ran out, hit our hit our hit our loss, hit our exit points. We went ahead and closed that one out for a loss. Uh, and so same day right before that is when we added the other one. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So we closed out one of our iron ducks in SPX. Now this one had the expiration of December 30th, so we were going to be in this for another you know, 10 days or so, but price ran up, just went ahead and booked that beak profit. Um, there's very little chance of getting back to the max profit area. So we just went ahead and booked that to redeploy, free up our capital and, uh, and get out of that one. Next trade. And this is today in Tesla. We, we added a new iron duck in Tesla. I've been watching this. I mean, Tesla has been on fire. We talked about that in a uh, video update earlier this week. And and I was, I was really looking for a little bit of a pullback, but we've got 
so much cash in our account right now, just looking to add some trade. So we did went ahead and, and the, even with the price going up, look at the implied volatility continues to expand. So uh, we went ahead and put on an iron duck in Tesla. And so that's what we're looking at here. Did this with two contracts. We've got a big profit of 132, max profit of 632. And that one expires uh, on the Jan 3 cycle. So as of today, we've got 14 days until expiration. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So again, just trying to add some positions. So we added an iron duck in SPX, went out to 21 days to expiration on this one. And so if we take a look at SPX here, There we go, catch up. Uh, that is this one here. So we just put that on. So not much movement since we put it on. So we've got a beak profit of 115, max profit of 615 on that one. Now we are still holding this one that expires today. So at the time of this recording, the market is not closed. So we're just gonna let this one expire and book that $110 beak profit. So we'll send out an alert. By the time you watch this, you will have received an alert uh, that 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 option, those options have uh, expired. So that's where we're at at SPX. Hope to maybe, uh, you know, if we get some downside, potentially add another SPX duck next week. Um, so that's the plan there. Uh, rolling adjusting trade. So this is a this is one that uh, a little interesting. So if you had this position on, what we did here is is our long put vertical. It with the stock with stocks moving higher, it was at a kind of a loss max point, and so instead of just even technically rolling it. We just let that one expire and then we added this one. So it's the same thing. This one closed. We added this one. Same as rolling and this just extends duration, keeps that short delta in our portfolio. We've been using this ES long put vertical for, for quite a while. It's kind of that downside hedge piece. And then lastly, closing trade in Shopify. So hit a nice reverse iron duck right in the duck head uh, for near max profit. Closed it out for uh, 15 cents. So pretty much expired worthless, giving us a profit of over $1,000 uh, on that trade. So great, great uh, reverse duck in Shopify. And we'll probably look to add another one of those uh, early next week. Some of the other positions here, I mentioned ES. Uh, G, well, I didn't show it on the platform though. So this is, uh, this is our long put vertical here in ES. Just put this on to keep some of that short delta exposure. GC, I, I want to talk about this one because we're at a point where we could, uh, you know, we're over 40% of max profit on this GC. What I'm looking to do, and I talked about this, I think it was in yesterday's video, is I'm just going to give it over the weekend, try to squeeze out a little bit more juice on this. But um, then the other thing is if we look at GLD, which is the gold ETF, uh, well, implied volatility is really contracted today. So if we get a little bit of a pop higher, what I was saying in yesterday's videos, IV percentile is over 30, which is not great. We typically don't look to sell a lot of premium uh, at that point, but it's kind of one of the highest on the board, right? You've got bonds, you've got uh, nat gas, and then there's not much else besides earnings plays. And so GLD, so we are looking at potentially adding uh, another iron condor in gold out in the next cycle. And then, uh, we'll, then we'll also close this one. So look for that uh, early next week. Natty Gas up a couple percent in our favor today. So you can see prices hanging out right here. Again, I would like to, I've been talking about this. I would like to add to this, uh, and we'll probably do that next week as well. We've got, we've got 39 days in this cycle. Uh, part, of, part of the wait is I, I'd like to add it in the next cycle just to diversify our uh, days to expiration. So the next one's at 67, so a little bit more than we like to, but but next week we'll probably add to this and we'll do it out in that March cycle with uh, what now has 67 days to expiration. Uh, bonds, I mentioned wheat. We've got this iron condor in wheat. So price spiked higher earlier this week. Uh, big, big move higher here and then has just kind of uh, come down off of that off of that extension and so price is hanging out right here in our iron condor so nothing to do quite there quite yet there apple we've got this long put vertical that we're holding for a short delta just outside the range need a little bit of downside to benefit that same thing with de we've got a short call vertical in john deere and then i already mentioned the the rolls we did in dia we've got one in jan which is right there, price right inside the range, and one in Feb, 
where price is uh, right inside the range. You'll notice these are the same strikes. So we have the same strikes in Jan and the same strikes in Feb, the 284 and the 289, uh, just different expiration cycles. FDX, I mentioned that one. Uh, Google, I mentioned IWM. We've got this uh, long put vertical, again, for short delta. Price is hanging out right here inside the range. Same thing on QQQ. We've got one in Jan, uh, where price is right here at the break-even point. And then we've got one in Feb, uh, where price is 211. Yeah, price is right here, right on the, right on the price slice. I mentioned RUT, SMH. So SMH is not playing friendly with us. It's uh, outside of our range here. Uh, you know, I talked about I would like to add to this, but implied volatility is just too low. So we're going to continue to manage. If we take off the, if we look at just the puts, just the untested side, you see we got a little bit of profit left uh, that we could capture in, on that side before we were, would roll. And so we, you know, if price stays here or continues higher into next week, we will be rolling up those puts. Uh, this cycle has 28 days. So by next week, we're down to 25, 24, something like that. We will just roll up the puts and roll that out to the next expiration cycle uh, in Feb. So that's the plan there. Uh, SPX, SPY. So we've got a... Um, we've got this short call vertical in SPY. Now, you might be wondering, well, how come you didn't get assigned? Well, the reason is, is because... Um, the, the folks who got assigned had iron ducks in SPY. So they had in the money calls. These calls are out of the money. Uh, so there's no, there's no dividend risk, uh, on that situation. So you just got to understand the positioning of those and just make sure you review the options, uh, mini, mini course option assignment, mini course. There's a whole section on dividend risk and how, and how to figure that out. You're basically just looking at the corresponding puts to where your calls are, depending on the value of the dividend and the corresponding put value. That's what it, what's going to determine if you are at dividend risk. It's it's very simple. It's kind of confusing at first, but I promise you, if you just look at it, write it down, watch the video a few times, it will become not not a big deal. I mentioned Tesla XLK. Uh, again, we've got a long put vertical here. Price has moved out of range, so we will be uh, just holding this for now. So those are all the positions. Those are all the alerts. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to mention? Uh, I mentioned assignment risk. Uh, you know, Keep in mind, too, the other thing I wanted to mention on assignment risk, when, if you get assigned, your risk does not change. Okay, so if you have a an iron duck on, and one of the you know the short call gets uh, assigned, for example, your overall risk doesn't change. It doesn't it doesn't look the same on your risk profile graph, so you can't you can't look at it that way. But your overall risk does not change, and so that's that's the other piece that I that I think you know Tim expressed and understands now, and I want to make sure everybody understands that that your risk doesn't train, change. Your buying power changes, which is kind of what freaks people out when they first get assigned, but your overall risk doesn't change. Now, another good point that was made in the community that I also want to reiterate, we've talked about before, but that is if you're in an iron duck that expires and you get assigned, well, if, if the trade is expiring and you get assigned, you no longer have those other legs, so your risk does change. So you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to get assigned and the rest of the legs expire because then you're just holding that naked short stock. And you know if it makes a move against you over the weekend, then, then you do have that additional risk. Again, is it that big of a deal? Well, of course, it depends on what kind of movement you get. Sometimes it works in your favor. Sometimes it works against you. Uh, but the reality is uh, that you, you, just, you typically don't want to get assigned uh, if the other options expire. But if you get assigned like the dividend, the SPY situation, your overall risk does not change. Uh, you just need to close out the remaining pieces and, uh, and take, what's, take what's left. So that is all. I, oh, one other thing. Sorry. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention here, I'm looking at my notes. Um, uh, that is when you're, when you're looking at setting up iron ducks in, in the class, we talk about the criteria that we look for is we want to have over 85% probability of profit. That's where we like to, that's where we like to set those up. 
you may have noticed, for example, let me go to um, let me go let me go to Amazon. I think that's the one I was looking at today. Uh, but it, there's a variety of them that, that are kind of in the same situation. So if we look at Amazon, uh, this was one I was looking at from the Gen 4 cycle. Uh, look at the look at the situation here. So the Iron Duck sets up decent, right? We've got a max profit on this of 539. Um, you know that's pretty close to the break even. Break even is a little higher. Uh, actually, let me just let me just start this over because I think this is important to understand. So let's just try to set up an Iron Duck on Amazon. Let's say 14 days to expiration. Let's go through and look at about the 65, 66 Delta calls. We're going to sell Iron Condor. Go to the, uh, let's call it the 1750 on the put side. And the 10 Delta, which is the 1735. Okay. So what I want to show you, if we take it over to the Analyze tab, is a lot of the criteria checks out, right? We've got... Um, We've got a duck beak, no risk to the upside, max profit 337. In this case, let's move our puts up one to see if we can make make that criteria. So yeah, now max profit 316, and we've got a our break even is is less than 300, so that's less than the max profit. Nice beak profit. Okay, so everything looks good except look at the probability of profit. It's only 76 percent. Right? We like to be over 85. Typically, the edge of the duck head or the break even is, is closer to this area, you know, outside this gray shaded area. So a much, uh, much better high probability trade. With implied volatility being as low as it is, with the options pricing uh, contracting to, the, to, the, to where it's at, it's, it's difficult to find probability of profits over 85%. Okay, so a couple things. What can you do about that? Well, you could set them up with a probability of profit under 85, right? And, and that's what we're going to have to start looking to do. I mean, even the, even the SPX one uh, that I put on today, I think it had like 84%. Uh, the Tesla one, I think may have had under 85. Let me just make sure here. Um, Tesla, mark our deal there. Yeah, 81. So 81%. So that's still a that's still a high probability of success, uh, but it's not you know it, so it's breaking our rule a little bit of that eighty five percent. But we want to stay active, we want to stay in the game, we want to continue to put these on because there's still high probability plays. But I wanted to point that out that when implied volatility is has contracted as much as it has across the board, that's kind of the situation that you're going to find yourself in. Now as earnings start to come closer again, implied volatility's got going to start expanding in these stocks and then we'll start getting these pops above 85%. But I just wanted to point that out that sometimes you got to give up a little bit of that probability when implied volatility is as low as it is. So hopefully that's helpful. Just wanted to make make sure you're aware of that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let us know. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.